Goeie dag, Raad Vibes, en baie welkom by jou vrou Marks sy virtuele klaskomer. Ek hoop dat met jou baie goed gaan en dat jy veilig by die huis is. I hope that you guys are doing well and that you're safely at home. Don't forget to look out for the ninth letter hidden somewhere in this video. There will be a huge surprise for the first person to guess the mystery Afrikaans word. Do you remember I told you about our two social upcoming events which will take place next week? Let's quickly recap what it's all about. Next week Wednesday, we celebrate Earth Day. This global event takes place annually on the 22nd of April. This year is Earth Day's 50th anniversary. Therefore, Earth Day celebrates 50 years of making a difference to our planet and to our future. Here's an idea. Why don't you dress with a dash of green next week Wednesday when we celebrate Earth Day together? To get you in the mood, here are more Earth Day jokes for kids. What did the tree wear to the pool party? Swimming trunks. What kind of hair do oceans have? Wavy. And what kind of bow can't be tied? A rainbow. Don't forget about the Sweetheart's Wheelchair Foundation. Simply collect bottle tops and or bread tags and bring it to school once the schools open. The Sweetheart's Wheelchair Foundation recycles these plastic products and uses the money to buy new wheelchairs for people who can't afford it. Why don't you also ask your family and friends to help you collect more? Don't forget about the Nali Bali website. This is the perfect place to find a story that will match your interest. There are hundreds of stories and you can decide in which language you want to read them. We will also celebrate World Book Day next week Thursday, the 23rd of April. Why don't you start planning your outfit so long and dress up like your favorite character? I'd love to see some photos of you all dressed up. Readers today are certainly leaders tomorrow. Reading not only betters your language skills, but it also expands your vocabulary. I hope that you're just as excited as I am about celebrating Earth Day and World Book Day next week. Let's jump into today's work. Vandaag is woensdag. Today is Wednesday. Die datum is 15 April 2020. The date is the 15th of April 2020. Hoe lyk die weer buitenkant jou venster? Die weer buitenkant my venster is gedeeltelik bewolk. The weather outside my window is partly cloudy. Die seisoen waarin ons tans is, is herbs. We are currently in autumn. Kom ons loer gauw weer na die vier seisoene in Afrikaans. Swimmer, summer. Herfs, autumn, winter, winter, in lente, spring. Kom ons oefen vier keer die maande van die jaar. Januari, februari, maart, april, mei, juni, juli, augustus, september, oktober, november en december. Kom ons oefen die alfabet en vokaalklanke. Ons oefen die alfabet en vokaalklanke sommer elke dag om seker te maak dat ons het baie goed ken. We practice the alphabet and vowel sounds every day to make sure that you really do have a grip and understanding of the sounds in Afrikaans. Ondou jou handtekens A, E, E, O en U. As ook F, 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 Vir vis en ei vir eis. Kom ons begin. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, E, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, K, R, S, T, O, F, V, X, I, Z, a, I, U, U, I, 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 O, U, I, I, 
oi, oi en eeuw. Kom ons loer gaan gauw na vandag sy spelwoorde. Hier die woorde het een ooi klank. Let's take a look at today's spelling words. These words have the ooi sound in them. Kan jy nog onthou hoe like die ooi klank? Can you still remember what the ooi sound looks like? Dit is ooi soos in rooi. Jou eerste spelwoord is rooi, which means red. Mooi, pretty or beautiful. Gooi, the verb to throw. Ooit, ever. En prooi, pray. Vlooi, flee. And isn't that just the nastiest parasite ever? Hooi, hey. Strooi means to sprinkle or scatter. Plooi, wrinkle. En nooi can be a noun, a girl, or it means to invite someone. Onthou om hierdie woordkies te gebruik in sinne. Don't forget to make sentences with each of these 10 words and to add them to your personal dictionary. Let's use the following example to illustrate how to add these words to your personal dictionary. If you want to use the word prooi, which is pray in English, you have to go to the P tab, P for pray, in your personal dictionary. Step 2. Write the word pray and next to it the Afrikaans meaning prooi. Your entry will look like this. Pray in langs dit prooi. Kom ons loer weer na meervoude en verkleining vandag. Onthou, ons kan net selfstandige naamwoorde in die meervoud of verkleining skryf. Remember, we can only write nouns in the plural or diminutive. Kom ons begin met meervoude. Let's kick off with plurals. Vandaagse spelwoorde het net drie selfstandige naamwoorde. Today's spelling words only have three nouns that we can write in the plural or diminutive. Prooi, which means pray. Vlooi, which is a flea, and it's really yucky. En plooi, which is a wrinkle. Weet jy dalk wat een reel om te gebruik om hier die woorde in die meervoud te skryf? Do you perhaps know the rule that we need to use to put these words in the plural? Let me give you a clue. We are going to make use of this rule. The six soldiers can't go off to war and they have to stay in the camp. And they're going to either get extra courses or injection with a syringe. Skryf nou jou eie antwoorde neer. Please do this activity by yourself now. Let's look at the answers. If you wrote these words in the plural by adding an E, you are entirely correct. Remember, we are making plurals and these six soldiers just get extra kossies. Kom ons kyk nou na verkleinwoorde. Kan jy hierdie drie spelwoorde in die verkleining skryf? Can you perhaps write these three words in the diminutive? Do you know which rule to use? Let me give you a clue. We are going to make use of this rule. Stop and write these three words in the diminutive now. Let's look at the answers. We are going to add a key sound. Prooi, prooi key. Vlooi, vlooi key. En plooi, plooi key. Ek hoop dat jy hier die woorde succesvol in die meervoud en verkleining kon skryf. I hope that you were successful in writing these spelling words in the plural and diminutive. Kom ons oefen vir kwartal 2 se mondeling. Let's practice for those terms unprepared speech. Today's topic is Wat het ek gedurende die grendeltijd gedoen? What did I do during the lockdown? Here are some ideas. Dalk het jy baie televisie gekyk? Perhaps you watched a lot of television. Dalk het jy videospielekies of rekenaarspielekies gespeel? Perhaps you played games on your PlayStation or on your computer or tablet. Het jy dalk a lachkaart gebouw? Did you perhaps build a puzzle? Speaking about what you're doing in lockdown right now reminds me of the fact that I completed a thousand piece puzzle. It might not look like much, but it's a thousand 
pieces. And of course, I'm very proud of myself. Maybe you did arts and crafts. Dalk was jy baie kreatief en het interessante dinge gemaakt. Dalk het jy baie tyd som met jou toeteldiere gespandeer. Perhaps you spend a lot of time with your pets. I personally spend 24-7 with my pets nowadays and they simply love all the attention they're getting. Maybe you finally cleaned that room of yours. Dalk het jy uiteindelik jou kamer opgeruim. Het jy dalk boordspielekies gespeel? Perhaps you played board games of dalk kaartspielekies or perhaps card games. Dalk het jy baie YouTube videos gekyk. Perhaps you watched a lot of YouTube videos. Dalk het jy baie op WhatsApp met jou vriende gesels. Perhaps you used WhatsApp to be in communication with your friends. Ek wil baie graag weet wat jy gedoen het gedurende die grendeltijd. Kom ons loer na gister se leesbegrip aktiviteit. Let's look at yesterday's comprehension activity. Ons het na a visuele tekst gekyk. We looked at a visual text. Hier is die prentjie waarna jy moes gekyk het. Here's the picture you had to study in order to answer the questions. Kom ons kyk saam na die vraag en antwoorde. Let's look at the questions and answers together. Vraag 1. Hoeveel mense sien jy? Question 1. How many people do you see? Die antwoord is, ek sien 5 mense. I see 5 people. Vraag 2. Hoeveel dieren sien jy? Question 2. How many animals do you see? Now, this can be a tricky question because fish are not animals and neither are ducks. Would they count as animals? That's debatable, but here's the answer. If you wrote you only saw one duck, you are completely correct. If you added about the fish and the ducks, I wouldn't mind. Axin ian hond. Twee visse en ses eende. I see one dog, two fish and six ducks. Vraag 3. Is dit a warm of koue dag? Question 3. Is dit a hot or cold day? Die antwoord is, dit is a warm dag. The answer is that it is a hot day. Vraag 4. Hoeveel boeken sien jy? Question 4. How many books do you see? The answer is ek sien vier boeken. The answer is that I see four books. Vraag 5. Hoeveel mense dra a bril? How many people wear glasses or spectacles? The answer is twee mense dra a bril. The answer is that in this picture two people are wearing their glasses or spectacles. Vraag 6. Hoeveel mense het hoedens op? How many people are wearing hats? Die antwoord is net twee mense, only two people. Vraag 7, waarvan lees Gogo en Neyo? What is Gogo en Neyo reading about? Hulle lees van see rovers. Now, see rovers might be a word you've never come across. See rovers are pirates. Why don't you add this word to your personal dictionary? Vraag 8, waarvan lees Mbali na Papa? Hulle lees van visse. Question 8. What is Mbali and a dad reading about? The answer, they read about fish. Kom ons luister en lees saam a story. Let's read and listen to a story. Hier die story se naam is Abu Ali tel sy donkies. This story's name is Abu Ali tel sy donkies. Loosely translated, Abu Ali counts his donkeys. Hier die story is in jou handboek op plaatsie 89. This story is in your textbook on page 89 if you'd like to follow in your textbook. Abu Ali tel sy donkies. Eendag stap Abu Ali dorp toe om een paar donkies te gaan koop. Hy koop 9 donkies en ry op die voorste een huis toe. Die ander donkies loop achterna. Na een rikkie Sê Abu Ali by homself. Ek moet seker maak dat al my donkies hier is. Hy draai om 
en begin sy donkie stel. Hy tel net acht donkies. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oogits, waar is die negende donkie? roep Abu Ali uit. Hy spring van sy donkie af en soek na die negende donkie. Hy soek achter die bome en rotse, maar hy sien die donkie nergens nie. Ek sal weer tel, sê Abu Ali. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nou is daar 9. Die donkie het seker teruggekom. Hy klim toe maar weer op die donkie en raai verder. Na rikkie draai hy weer om en tel die donkies. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Daar is net 8 donkies. Hy spring van die donkie af en soek weer achter die bome en rotse na die negende donkie. Hy kry die donkie nergens nie. Ek sal weer tel, sê hy. Hier die keer is daar weer nege. Hy klim op die donkie en rai verder. Een rukkie later sien Abu Ali sy vriend, Moussa, langs die pad. Moussa, roep hy uit, help my om my donkies te tel asseblief. Daar is elke keer een te min. Wanneer ek stop om hulle te tel, is daar net acht donkies. Maar as ek afklim, om die negende een te soek, is hy weer daar. Dan is daar nege. Wel, ek kan tien donkies sien, Abu Ali, <laughs> lach Moesa. Tien? Hoeso? Vraag Abu Ali. Ek sien die donkie waarop jy rai, en ek sien acht donkies achter jou, sê Moesa. Natuurlijk, roep Abu Ali uit. Ach, ek was so dom, maar waar is die tiende donkie? Hy rai op die negende donkie se rug, sê Moesa, en sy naam is Abu Ali. Ek hoop dat jy hierdie story geniet het. Arme Abu Ali, hy het vergeet om die donkie te tel waarop hy rai. Poor Abu Ali, he forgot to count the donkey that he was sitting on each time. Kom ons beantwoord een paar vraagies oor hierdie story. Let's answer a couple of questions about this story. Vraag 1. Onderstreep die correcte antwoord. Question 1. Underline the correct answer. Vraag 1. Die titel van die story is Abu Ali se nege donkies of is dit Abu Ali tel sy donkies? Jy kan besluit wat er een van hierdie twee is die correcte antwoord. Can you spot the correct answer? Vraag 2. Die twee karakters in die story is Abu Ali en Musa of is dit Abu Ali en die donkies? Question 2. The two characters in the story is Abu Ali in Musa, or is it Abu Ali in the donkeys? Vraag 3. Abu Ali stap plaas of dorp toe om sy donkeys te koop? Question 3. Abu Ali walks where? To the farm or to the town to buy his donkeys? Vraag 4. Abu Ali het 9 of 8 donkeys gekoop? Question 4. Abu Ali bought nine or eight donkeys, which is the correct answer. Vraag 5. Abu Ali rai op die achterste of op die voorste donkie huis toe? Question 5. Does Abu Ali ride on the back or front donkey on his way home? Here is vraag 2. Dit is wat denk jy vraag is. Yes, question 2. It's what do you think questions. Vraag 1. Waarom, denk jy, sê Moesa, dat Abu Ali a donkey is? Question 1. Why do you think Musa called Abu Ali a donkey? En vraag 2. Wat denk jy beteken dit as jy iemand a donkey noem? Question 2. What do you think it means if you call someone a donkey? Oh, and, and please don't call anyone a donkey. It might be offensive. Kom ek toets jou algemene kennis. 
Let me test your general knowledge. Weet jy wat er geluid a donkey maak? Do you know which sound a donkey makes? I uh, know it's not E or E or. I want the actual name for the sound. Vraag 2. Wat is die mannelik en vrouwelik van donkey? Question 2. What is the male and female of a donkey? I'm giving you a clue. Die mannelike vorm begin met a H en die vrouwelike vorm begin met a M. Do you know the answers to these two questions? If you don't, maybe it's time for a Google search. Kom ons luister saam na a liekie. Hierdie liekie sy naam is Oe die donkie. Jy sal hierdie liekie op laatse 92 in jou handboek vind. Let's listen to a very silly song. It's called Oh the Donkey. This song is also in your textbook on page 92. Oor die donkie, oor die donkie, oor die donkie is een wonderlijke ding. Hy skop hoog op en stamp sy kop, oor die donkie is een wonderlijke ding. Oor die donkie, oor die donkie, oor die donkie is een wonderlijke ding. Oor die donkie, oor die donkie, oor die donkie is een wonderlijke ding. Hy skop hoog op en stamp sy kop, oor die donkie is een wonderlijke ding. Oor die donkie, oor die donkie, oor die donkie is een wonderlijke ding. Hy skop hoog op en stap sy kop. Oor die donkie is een wonderlijke ding. I hope you enjoyed this silly, nonsensical song about a donkey. Let me loosely translate this song. It basically says a donkey is a wondrous thing. It can kick very high and then it hits his head. Oh, it's so wonderful. Doesn't sound too wonderful to me if he hits his own head. Anyway, kom ons doen ons laaste taalaktiviteit. Let's do our last language activity for today. Ons gaan weer na Stompie kyk. We're going to look at Stompie again. Let's put a face to Stompie. Remember, Stompy is your best Afrikaans buddy from now until matric. Let's quickly recap what Stompy is all about. Stompy is an acronym that helps us to write parts of sentences in the correct order. Think of it as a recipe that helps you step by step. We are not going to look at verb 2 or the infinitive just yet. We are going to look at the following components. Subject, followed by verb 1, the time, object, manner and place. Our first sentence was, Die sien skop die sokkerbal. Die sien is the subject because it answers the who question. Verb 1 is skop, it's the action word. It means to kick. In this case it would be the boy kicks. And lastly, the soccer ball answers the what question. What does the boy kick? He kicks the soccer ball. We added a time word. Because our sentences are in present tense, our time words will also be in the present tense. Die sien skop vandag die soccer ball. The boy kicks the soccer ball today. Onthou, remember. Word order in Engels and Afrikaans is nie die nie. Word order in English and Afrikaans does not necessarily correspond every time. Kom ons kyk na tydwoorde. Let's look at examples of time words in the present tense. Elke dag, every day. No, now. Vandag, today. In tans, currently. We added the manner in which the action takes place. Die sien skop vandag die sokkerbal baie hard. It answers the how question. How is the verb executed? He kicks very hard. Next we looked at the place where this action is happening. It's the answer to the where question. Let's do activity 11. It's only two sentences. Kom ons oefen nog een bykie om stompie te gebruik. Sentence 1, sin 1, tuk, a whatsapp boodskap, koesle, nou, en die kombuis. 
allow me to translate loosely. Type a WhatsApp message, Kusle, now in the kitchen. This sentence does not make any sense. We need to call in the help of Stompy. Don't wait for the answers. You need to try this by yourself. Kom ons kijk naar die antwoorde. Let's see if you could correctly identify each part of the sentence. Tuk, to type, is our action word. A WhatsApp words cup answers the what question, therefore it's the object. Kusle answers the who question, which means that Kusle is the subject of the sentence. No answers the when question, therefore it's the time word. In Indicom Bice answers the where question. All that's left now is for you to unscramble these parts of the sentence by using the Stompy acronym. Please do this now. Kom ons kijk na die antwoorde. Kusle is the subject, therefore Kusle is written first. Verb 1, type, followed by the time word, now. It's a present tense time word. A WhatsApp wordscap is the object. And lastly, we have the place, in the combis. Our sentence thus reads, Kusle tik now, a WhatsApp wordscap in the combis. This sentence does not contain the manner in which Kusle typed this message. Let's look at our final example. Sing, a Afrikaanse liki, tans, die talentvolle meisie, in haar kamer, baie mooi. This sentence is quite a mouthful. Take out your color pencils and try to identify each part of the sentence all by yourself. Remember to color code each part of the sentence. It will only assist you. Right, let's look at the answers. Sing is our action word. Afrikaans elik is the question to the what question. Tans is the answer to the when question. Die talentvolle meisie is the answer to the who question. In haar kamer is the answer to the where question. In baie mooi is the answer to the how question. I hope that you could correctly identify each part of this sentence. All that's left now is to put in the correct order by keeping Stompy in mind. Do not skip this activity. Do this now before looking at the answers. It's only to your own benefit. Kom ons kijk na die antwoorde. Die talentvolle meisie is written first because it's the subject and Stompy tells us the S for subject comes first. Followed by the V1, verb, say sing, she sings. Followed by tans, our time word which means currently. Our object is a Afrikaans saliki. Followed by the manner in which the school sings this Afrikaans song. Baya mooi. It's very beautiful to listen to. In a plaak waar sy sing is in haar kamer. Dis lees die sin. Die talentvolle meisie sing tans a Afrikaans saliki baya mooi in haar kamer. I hope that you got this sentence correct. I'm so proud of you for trying this all by yourself. You will reap the benefits if you understand Stompy well. Well, 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 this looks like our ninth letter in the letter game we are playing. You need to unscramble the letters to form a mystery Afrikaans word. This mystery Afrikaans word consists of 10 letters. In the next video, you will get the final letter and then you can start unscrambling. I wonder who will be the first person to guess the correct answer. Well, we've come to the end of our video and this is Gorgat saying hi and bye. Ek sien jylle weer more. Tot ziens.